Amen. Brother, I don't remember your name, but I'm going to ask you to come mind the Lord if you sing us a song or uh, this brother goes over, been over there with Toby uh, over at Newcomb Valley. I've been with him a few different times in church service and like I said, I don't remember his name, but I love him. Uh, he's a brother in Christ and uh, just appreciate him. But you mind the Lord, all right? Hey, this is Brock. Hey, man. Bless you, Lord. Good to be with you tonight. Uh, I'd mean to make it out here with Toby. It's been what now? A month or a month or so? I was planning on making it out here with him, but. I just, some things came up with work and wasn't able to make it out, but me and my wife, that's right, my wife. Hey, you just uh, married last time. No, no, things have changed a lot. We were able to make it out to be with you all tonight, though, and no place we'd rather be than in the house of the Lord. And, you know, sometimes uh, unforeseen situations and circumstances pop up, don't they? Whether they be a, a bump in the road, I don't know if that's what happened to you or not, but I've, I've had a few of them happen to me. Uh, but... <laughs> but uh, I'm a truck driver, or at least used to be, uh, been doing this job hauling campers out of Indiana for about uh, five years or so pushing it, and uh, this truck that I've got done great for years now, and I get married, we've, we booked a trip going over to uh, Pensacola, Florida, and I always wanted to show her from the time we got together, I always wanted to show her the Gulf Coast. And uh, we made it all the way there uh, to Warrior, Alabama, anyways. And the transmission went out. And before that, there were some other little mishaps that came up, just flat tires. The night of our wedding, we had a flat tire three miles away from the house. We started up to Indiana to get the camper. One of the tires separated on the truck. So just many different things. And it seemed like everything was coming against us and, and I remember when my transmission went out and my truck started to lose power and uh, I felt this horrible feeling down in the pit of my stomach just that dread anybody know what I'm talking about just that dread that you feel when you know that there's gonna be other things down the road for you just things you gotta pay for just things that are gonna bring stress just uncertain times that lie ahead you know what I'm talking about and I remember when I began to feel this I said no I'm gonna have to do what the scripture says to do and it says that if you preach the gospel you must live by the gospel and, and I said no I, I, I was at a crossroads at that moment and I said I can either choose to worry about things that I absolutely have no control over and that's what we do most of the times is it not we worry about things that we have no control over they've happened to us it's in the past now so it's time for us to move on and I remember making that conscious decision that I had to live by my own preaching and my own counsel, which I've counseled to many others, that we're going to live by what it says in Philippians chapter 4, verses 8 through 12. When Paul spoke and he said, whatsoever things are good, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, if there be any praise, if there be any virtue, think on these things and the God of peace shall be with you. Amen. And he says, I know what it's like to be abased. And I know what it's like to abound. Right. But I have found to be content no matter what state of life I am in. And that's the promise of God to the believer today. No matter where we're at in life, no matter what hand this life has dealt you, whether it be rough finances, uncertain times, maybe your health is failing, no matter what's going on, you can trust the Lord and know that victory awaits you in your latter end. And I remember telling my wife that. I said, there's nothing to be upset about. And, you know, we... Uh, we came to the stop, that slow rolling stop that you do. And uh, I remember after we sat there and talked for a little bit, I just began to tear up and she said, oh, she said, are, are, are you crying? And I, I said, yeah. I said, I got what I wanted. Because I prayed and I prayed and I prayed for so long for a good, godly wife. Somebody that would be a help me to me and the devil had told me throughout my years that I would never have that, that there was no one out there 
and the Lord made a liar out of them. And I said, I'm not going to let the mishaps of this situation take away the beauty which God has blessed me with. And you're going to have to be just the same in many situations that arise in your life. Just like me and her did, we got out beside of the truck, we slow danced, and we began to have a good time. Broke down for over 24 hours, and we had a great time. The honeymoon vacation might not have been much, but, but we still enjoyed each other's company. But what I want to get through to you today is that no matter where you're at, you can have victory. You can walk in victory. You don't have to have perfect health to have victory. You don't have to have the best finances and the best credit score, the best house, the best vehicle to have victory. When you know that the Bible tells you very clearly in the book of Peter, he says that you have a home reserved for you in heaven, a place that is incorruptible, that fadeth not away, and it's reserved for you. We've got victory in that, and we ought to be able to rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory because of that, right? So let's give him some praise tonight. I've heard an old, old story How a Savior came from the glory How He gave His life on Calvary To save a wretch like me I heard about His groaning Of His precious blood's atoning Then I repented of my sin And won the victory Cause there's victory my Savior forever He sought me and He bought me With His redeeming blood He loved me ere I knew Him And all my love is to Him He plunged me to victory Beneath the cleansing blood you know you got victory you've got victory in Jesus today well there was a I tell this every time I, I, I come to a new place but I, I just I just find it worth sharing uh, there was a little boy about a two-year-old boy that sang that song you'd be blown away by how good a tune he kept but he didn't know that it said he plunged me to victory and he got to that part and he said and he punched me to victory beneath the cleansing flood you know what that's a sometimes it does it makes me a little envious of that of that angel that came to Peter when he was locked up in that prison cell that Herod had thrown him in and it, he the Bible says that he smote him on the side and he said Peter get up put your sandals on and get out and, and there's something that bothers me in today's church age redeemed born again children of God walking around in this life like they don't have any victory beat up and made a welcome mat for the enemy and let me tell you that you've got victory I get envious of that angel because if I could smite somebody and say what are you so sorrowful for don't you know that we have a promise of redemption we have a promise of peace that passes all understanding we've got a reason to lift his name on high no matter what's going on in our lives Paul and Silas lifted up a praise in the prison when their lives were very uncertain at the moment but there was never a moment in these disciples lives where you don't see them giving God glory 
we've got reason to praise him. I know that the weights of life get heavy and troublesome upon us, but we've still got reason to rejoice with joy unspeakable and full of glory. Amen. We've got a reason to shout. We've got a reason to stand. If you've got a praise on your heart today, leave it. You're free. Where the Spirit of the Lord is, there is liberty. You're free. You're born again. You're redeemed. You know how the story ends if you truly believe the Word of God. And that's reason enough for us to say no matter what this life brings, I'm not down, I'm not outcast, I'm not dismayed because I know he's Jehovah Jireh, God our provider, amen. So don't worry about all of these things that come into your life and try to bring distress and anxiety and depression and worry all these things. He said to be careful in nothing. It means not to be anxious, not to worry about anything, but pray about all things, to pray without ceasing. Why? Because there's power in prayer. We prayed around that truck and guess what? We and the truck got back home for $200 when the, when the towing company was trying to charge us $2,700. You know, and these are just little worldly things that don't amount to a hill of beans in the kingdom of God. But to put it in carnal understanding so somebody can grasp on to what I'm trying to tell them today that he will provide for you. Amen. There's no big cares. There's no little cares that God is not interested in getting into with you. He wants to be in all of them. Yeah. And yeah. I believe in healing. I believe in the power of God. Amen. And I know that where the Spirit of the Lord is, there's freedom. Yeah. And he says to cast all of your cares upon me, yeah. for I care for you. Appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you, brother. Amen. Thankful to be here tonight. We are thankful for each one that's come out. Amen. And uh, we didn't need to be more attentive of God and His presence through the Holy Spirit as He leads and guides us and directs us and, and the way that He'd have us to go to know that... Uh, you know, as I said the last time or maybe before, talking about being able to be taught, to be teachable, uh, you know, and we can learn from these things, these situations that we encounter in life to learn, amen, and I, I, I never forget that I'm just a pilgrim passing through. See, I'm just here for a little while, however long that is. No, I don't want to hasten it, no matter how much time you may think I do. <laughs> Amen. Uh, I don't want to speed up. I mean, I want to be here as long as the Lord wants me to be here. And as long as I'm here, I want to be able to glorify him and lift up holy hands unto him. Praise God. Amen. As just as the Bible tells us, that if he be lifted up, uh, that he will draw all men unto him. Amen. Praise God. Yeah, I could belly ache and moan and groan and all that, but guess what? Uh, my foot still hurts. I still got a gash in my head. And my arm still tore up and all that, but guess what? It'll be okay. Amen. Uh, because I have a better home. I have a hope and a promise in Jesus Christ. Praise God. Uh, sometimes I need to be knocked in the head to kind of be reminded of just of my frailty and just of my humanity. Praise God to know that God is still God. Amen. People say, well, God doesn't work that way. Well, you know, whatever. Um, uh, God gets my attention. Praise God. Amen. Don't you think that I've not prayed just a little bit more? Amen. After dumping, I dumped a dirt bike is what I did, uh, Brock. Uh, and I wasn't even carrying on because I do carry on on the dirt bike. At that time, I wasn't really carrying on. But anyway, regardless, life happens, praise God. And really the thing about life is how are we going to handle it? How are we going to deal with it, praise God? And as Brock was saying about that perfect peace, there is peace. Amen. There is joy unspeakable and full of glory in the in Lord God Almighty. And we're going to be in uh, 2 Timothy chapter 3. Uh, I don't know that we'll preach or however, but God will bring it out the way that he wants to. It's been a long time since I actually wrote notes down, so to speak, but uh, we want to be mindful of God. Amen. I want to be a vessel 
a willing vessel unto honor. Amen. So we're in chapter 3, 2 Timothy, praise God. He said, This know also that in the last days perilous times shall come. Amen. So I know, you know, the day that we're living in, people will look around. They say, now, there's not a doubt uh, uh, that we're living in perilous times. Uh, uh, surely we're in the last days. And and the kind of the way I look at it, you know, if God doesn't come back today, guess what? Uh, he may come back tomorrow if it gets here. Uh, uh, but praise God, I thought about uh, uh, how there, as we begin to look at uh, in the beginning there, when God created everything and how it's been mentioned here in the last little bit that, that man's imagination was on evil continually, praise God, and it re of the Lord that he had made man uh, in a way that he said that I would flood the earth, I would cause it to rain, uh, uh, praise be to God. I don't know uh, uh, the population at that time, but I know there was more than eight. Amen. Praise be to God. But we know according to the word of God uh, that only eight souls were saved. It was so wicked and ungodly um, uh, that God said that it repented him uh, and that he would destroy the earth. Praise be to God. So he took Noah, uh, praise be to God, and Noah's family, uh, and he put him on an ark uh, and told him to go out and get the animals and load the ark and all that. I'll cause it to rain uh, uh, for, for 40 days and 49. Uh, uh, praise be to God and how uh, uh, that the rain came and the eight souls were saved. Uh, in the book of Peter, it says they were saved by water. Uh, uh, praise be to God. But to understand uh, uh, that eight souls were saved. There were hard times uh, uh, many, many moons ago. Uh, uh, Sodom and Gomorrah, praise be to God. Uh, as they went into the city, Lot said he uh, said at the gate, said it vexed his righteous soul. Uh, uh, praise Praise be to God. You know the story uh, uh, how that the angel of the Lord came to Abraham there uh, and him and Sarai there in the, in the desert. Praise be to God. And he said, we're going to go uh, and Sodom and Gomorrah is going to be destroyed. Uh, and he went down through the numbers. I don't remember just exactly where he started at, but if there be 50 righteous, then I'll spare it. Well, if there'll be this many, if there'll be this many, if there be this many, uh, uh, if I recall, uh, uh, praise be to God, only ones will his lot, uh, his two daughters uh, and his wife, praise be to God, uh, who became a pillar of salt because she looked back, uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, that's why the Bible tells us uh, that he that take hold of the plow uh, and look it back uh, is not fit uh, uh, for the kingdom of heaven, uh, uh, praise be to God. So I don't know the population of Sodom and Gomorrah uh, but it was evil and it was wickedness and it was ungodly, praise be to God. And they were against God. They blasphemed God. Uh, uh, they was unrighteous and all that. Praise be to God. And God's wrath poured out upon them. Praise be to God. It says, I, this I know also in the last days, perilous times shall come. We're living in the last days. Every day that we live, praise be to God, uh, it's in the last days. Amen. Praise be to God. Understand this. When I was born, I, I started to die. Amen. Praise be to God. Each day that I live, I, I'm one day closer uh, uh, to meeting my maker, so to speak. Uh, uh, praise be to God. I'm one day closer uh, uh, to this body uh, uh, going back uh, uh, to the dust of the ground uh, uh, from which it come from. Uh, uh, but praise be to God. I thank God uh, that I don't fear him uh, that can destroy the body, uh, uh, but I fear him uh, that can destroy both body and soul uh, and cast it into a lake of fire. Uh, uh, praise be to God. God. I have a fear of God and it's healthy and it's right and it's just and it's holy and praise be to God yeah it gets my attention praise be to God but we can look around and that's the thing and that's the problem I don't really take a whole lot in off of Caleb I know Cindy I said I wasn't going to move a whole lot but praise God it'll be okay but on Caleb they said something about where you stay 
there is where you steer. Uh, if you don't get that, it's what you're looking at. It's where you're going to go. Amen. If that makes a little better sense to you, I'm driving down the road. I look over at a car that I think that's a nice looking car. I start going that way. Uh, uh, my dad would always go down the road and he'd see some cows. He said, look at them cows over in the get back on the road, mom would say. Amen. Praise be to God. We get our eyes uh, uh, fixed on things. We begin to stare at things. Uh, it says that in the last days there'll be perilous times. Praise God. Uh, if you're focusing on all the negative and all the bad, guess what? It was there in the beginning. Praise yeah. be to God. Yeah. However long it took, I don't know when Satan come along and said, hey, uh, Eve, uh, look here. God said not to eat of this, uh, but guess what? You eat of it, uh, you'll be just like him. Uh, uh, praise God. Look, it's nice to look at. Uh, it's pleasant to the eye. Go ahead and take you a big old bite. It'll be okay. Uh, and guess what? She took a bite and guess what? She handed to Adam and Adam took a bite and guess what? Sin entered into the world. Uh, uh, praise. When they was just two. Yeah. Yeah. Huh? They were just two. Sin, sin, the wages of sin is death. Amen. Praise be to God. Where good is, evil is always present. Amen. Pray. He says, choose you this day whom you will serve. Praise be. Good or evil, blessings or cursings, life or you, you pick what you want to stare at. You pick what you want to look at, praise be to God, uh, and what you get your eyes fixed on. And what the thing about it is, what's so good about having a close relationship, uh, having the Holy Spirit, praise God, uh, uh, living deep down inside you, uh, uh, praise be to God, Dave, uh, when I get to staring at something, think, huh, I need to quit staring, uh, uh, turn my head the other way, because uh, that's not something I need to uh, be taking hold of, uh, uh, praise be to God, uh, uh, understanding uh, uh, that God will reprove through the Spirit of God, uh, he will reprove you, rebuke you, praise be to God, he will chastise you. Uh, he will guide you and show you the way that you should walk. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, he will light uh, he, uh, his lamp. Praise God. Lights the path that I walk on. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, I'm not blinded in this world. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Because if the blind uh, lead the blind, uh, uh, guess what? Uh, uh, you going in the ditch. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, and I'll tell you what. Uh, I've cleaned out uh, uh, many a ditch. I'd rather be on some asphalt. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, kind of like Lightning McQueen. Uh, oh, Tomater said, I'm the first one. Uh, it was a bumpy road, uh, but praise be to God. Uh, I tell you what, uh, uh, 27 years, uh, it was a bumpy road, uh, and God came along, uh, and he smoothed it out, uh, and guess what? Uh, I have some more uh, uh, bumpy roads, uh, uh, but praise be to God. Uh, I got somebody uh, uh, that's closer than a brother, uh, uh, praise be to God. I got somebody that will not leave me nor forsake me. He'll even go to the ends of the world with me. So in the last days, this know also that in the last days, perilous times will come. You know what I say? Let it come, let it come. You know why? Because Jesus reigned. Huh? Jesus will reign. Amen. Praise be to God. We'll go on just a little bit. Amen. We look here in verse 2. It says, For men shall be lover of their own selves. Amen. That's today. And that's been a long time ago. Nothing's changed. Amen. Praise be to God. Uh, maybe other than there's no shame anymore. Amen. Sometimes, I guess a while back, maybe people tried to hide it more. I don't know. Uh, but for men shall be lovers of their own self. Covetous. I looked up definitions. Praise God. Covetous. Having or showing a great desire to possess something belonging to somebody else. Amen. If you're covetous, praise God, then you want uh, what everybody else has got. Amen. I want to tell you tonight, praise God, you got Jesus. What else could you want? 
Amen. What else is there? Praise be to God. Yeah, I, I like cars and everything, and I, uh, we praying about racing again. And some of you saying, "Oh no, it'll be okay." Amen. When you got seat belts, helmet, fire extinguisher, fire suit, and all that good stuff. But praise be to God. Here's the thing about it: uh, uh, whether we do it or whether we don't, it's okay. Uh, uh, praise be to God because I I still have my Jesus uh, each passing day. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, it's not as he said about the vehicle I drive. Uh, it's not about the house I live in. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, yeah, God, he will bless you. Uh, he'll give you the desires of your heart, so to speak, uh, according to his will. If it's God's will uh, for us to go back around in a circle, little Isaiah will jump in the car and he'll go in the circle. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, or however he sees fit, if that's what it is. Uh, but if it's not, guess what? It'll be okay. Uh, uh, praise be to God because God has taken care of me uh, uh, from the very day uh, I was before I was ever in my mother's womb. God began to work a work in me. Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, he said this is my child. Uh, I'm going to call him to preach. Uh, I'm going to call him to be saved. Uh, I'm going to shed my blood for him uh, and one day uh, he's going to accept the free gift of grace that I have for him and praise be to God it's all going to cut loose then yeah come get you some hey, you can be all down and out if you want to that's alright that's between you and the Lord I, you know I bounce my head off that gravels and yeah it, I, ooh. So, man that hurt I thought I'm okay I'm okay And I had to come to church, but I had to crawl to the bathroom. But I'm okay. Amen. But I, I sat in that recliner. I didn't tell Tanya this. I wrecked that recliner too. Amen. I flipped that thing out, and there I went right out on the floor backwards. And I thought, my goodness, Lord, what are you trying to tell me? Can't even sit in a recliner. I mean, sometimes we need to slow down. Huh? Sometimes we just need to slow down. Yeah, especially for me because I'm going, 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 going. It's like you need to slow down a little bit. Amen. Praise God. For men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, boast to talk with excessive pride. You all that in a bag of chips, nine feet tall and bulletproof. You think you're this and that and all that. Praise God. Hey, Amen, you just like the rest of us. You made out of dirt. Hey, Amen, praise be to God. But the thing that uh, makes us different is the Spirit of God. Hey, Amen, when he believed in man's nostrils and made him a living soul, praise be to God. But talk with excessive pride, self-satisfaction about one's achievements, possessions, or abilities. Hey, Amen, that's to be boastful, praise God. Uh, covetous boasters proud I even read this feeling deep pleasure or satisfaction as a result of one's own achievement qualities or possession of those of someone with whom one is closely associated amen praise God and then you go on to blasphemers that's talking bad about God amen denouncing God you know, however you speak in there reverently is the word they use. Uh, uh, praise God, talking bad about God, using his name as a byword uh, or wherever you are not using it reverently, not uh, using his name as a holy name. Praise God. Amen. Uh, I looked up natural affection. Praise God. And the one for natural affection, it talked about not having love for one another. Praise God. And we live in a world today that no one, uh, they seem like they love their self. Incontinent, praise God, I had to skip from the first one and go to the second one. It says lacking self-restraint or uncontrol. Amen, traitor, a person who betrays a friend. Country principles are so heady. I fall under heady. The first definition for it was reckless. I'm a real reckless sometimes. Amen, praise God. And here's the thing. I know uh, you may think, well, well that's whatever, you know. No, here's the thing. That's why God was showing me this. When he began to show me this, he said, hey, you need to understand that you can't be reckless with your life. 
because I have blessed you to have breath in your body, uh, praise God. I'm not telling you you can't ride the bike, but you can't be reckless. Amen, praise be to God. I can't be reckless with my life, praise God. I went down to the office and they said, how old are you? I said, I'm almost 50. They said, well, you're going to quit riding the bike when you turn 50. I said, absolutely not. But I will ride the bike different. You think, well, you're 50, almost 50. You should already know that. Don't sit there and tell me that you're not reckless with some things. Yeah. All right, I'm just reckless with speed, with bikes and cars and things of that nature. I do pretty good with the vehicle. I don't drive so fast anymore. Tickets are too high to pay. Amen. So you think, so when the word of God speaks to you, you so we study to show ourselves approved, a workman, uh, being able to rightly divide the word of God. So what happens is, is if I'm, praying and I'm studying and I'm reading and, and I do something that ain't in line with what God wants me to be doing, then he'll speak to me and say, hey, you need to pay attention. You need to take notice, praise God. And here's the thing tonight is that, as I said, we need to be mindful of what we're staring at because we'll begin to steer. We begin to go that way. If I want to look at my afflicts, I can moan and groan about my foot. My foot's the worst. Actually, the worst thing was my glasses were bent. Took me about an hour to get them straight. And they probably still ain't straight, but praise the Lord, I get a new pair tomorrow. But I could sit and moan and groan about my affliction. You can sit and moan and groan about your affliction. Does that change the affliction? He mentioned Paul and Silas. Amen. They were whipped and thrown into the innermost parts of the jail. Praise be to God. Left to rot and die and be there and never thought of no more. But yet about the midnight hour. Hey, they begin to sing praises unto God. Amen. And the earthquake came and the, uh, began to shake and the shackles fell off and the doors were open. Uh, uh, praise be to God. No jailer came uh, and was going to kill himself because he thought, he, you see, he was beginning to stare at the doors being open uh, and he thought everybody was gone. He didn't have a clue. Hey, but he was getting ready to find out. Uh, uh, praise God, because Paul called out. Uh, hey, do yourself no harm. Uh, we're all here. Yeah. Hey, Amen. Praise be to God. The long and the short of it is he got saved and his family got saved and they were baptized. Hey, Amen. Praise be to God. We need to change our sorrow into praise. And I know it's easier said than done sometimes. I know, praise God, things that I've went through don't even scratch the surface of what some of you have encountered. Amen, but praise be to God, God is still God. He doesn't change with the affliction. Amen, whether you wreck a bike or you uh, whatever, cut your leg off, I don't know. Dave, I'm sorry. You don't want to work as a sawmill, don't be cutting your leg. Whatever, I mean, whatever it is, you guys know what I'm getting at. Whatever your, everyone, see the, the woman that had an issue of blood. How many got issues? We all got issues. Amen. We all got issues. Amen. Praise be to God. But what are we seeking? She spent all she had on all the physicians, spent all she had. Searched here and there and everywhere, but praise God, she finally decided if I could just touch the hem of his garment, praise be to God. Where are you seeking? Where are you staring? What are you looking to, praise God? We can look to the day. Today, yes, there's perilous times. Abortion, killing babies is a sin. It's wrong, praise be to God. 
shacking up together, fornication, adultery, it's wrong, homosexuality, it's wrong, praise be to God, lying, cheating, stealing, it's wrong, uh, uh, praise be to God, we can go all day long and point out what all is wrong, uh, but praise be to God, uh, see, I know what once was wrong, uh, but now I know what's right. Amen. And it's, it's with God. It's with the Spirit of God. Because of God, I have been made whole. I have been made right. Uh, I once was blind, but now I see. Amen. Praise be to God. What are you staring at? What are you looking to? Uh, uh, praise be to God. Uh, uh, we know that we live in a time. Praise God. Uh, uh, yeah, there's going to be those that are heady. They're high-minded. They're boasters. They're proud. Uh, uh, praise be to God. All that. It, it's, it's been there from the beginning. I mean, what, you know, God come to Noah and said, hey, I'm going to cause it to rain. I'm going to flood the earth and everybody's going to die except for you and your wife and your boys and their life. I mean, actually think about that. I mean, see if you can take your mind out of today. That's why I try to get the kids at school. I'm like, you know, we're talking about the 13 colonies and the, you know, colonists coming over from England. I said, you're thinking about TikTok and Twitter and Bookface and all that. And I said, you can't even imagine what it's like to come out from under the rule of a king. Out under the king of England, out of the church of England. And I said, you, you can't even understand what it's like to be under, in Catholicism, be under a pope. And why they was leaving, why they was coming to the Americas, because all you're concerned about is what's going on right now. See, we, we use the past to learn. I mean, why do we have the Old Testament? But, well, I, I got at least to have 66 books, because if I don't have 66, it just ain't really called a book. I mean, I don't know. There's a reason why we have the past. There's a reason why it's called history. Yes, it's a schoolmaster. And, and we're to learn from it. But that's the problem. So many of us are not teachable. We don't, we don't allow God, Lisa ain't here so I'll say it, to learn us. We don't allow God to teach us. We don't allow him to instruct us, praise God. We do a little bit. There's a reason why we have the word of God. It's not a, a knick-knack or novelty thing that you stick on the coffee table. It's not a placeholder in the bookshelf it is words of life it is living it's the living word of god that we take it we apply it to our life and we grow and we learn and we mature and we mess up and we learn and we grow and we mature and we mess up the problem is, is when you mess up and you don't learn, and you don't mature. The problem is that being a babe, still desiring the sincere milk, when you should be on meat. I just turned 22. If I'm still on milk, ain't something bad wrong. It don't matter. You say, well, you're a pre It don't matter. If I wasn't a preacher, 22-year-old Christian, I should be off of the milk. I should be able to handle some meat. We get into the word, we study, we do the things that God will have us to do, however God will have you to study. I study different than what other people study, you know, and that's fine. God still blesses me. He still directs me. He still leads me. He still chastises me. That's how I know I'm his. Huh? I know. I know who holds my hand. I know whose palm I'm in. Regardless of what's going on in this life, I know who holds tomorrow. And I thank God that he holds me. Even in my foolishness and my shortcomings and all that, 
that God will pick me up and he'll dust me off and say, let's try again. And guess what? I'm willing to try again. I'm not going to sit and focus on my shortcomings. Everybody I went to or come around in, they shaking their head at me. I reckon Tanya told everybody she talked to. I said, you act like I'm the only one that's ever wrecked a dirt bike. It's happened before. And guess what? It'll probably happen again. Amen. But I'll tell you what, next time I'll have something on my head. By God's grace and God's mercy. All right. I'm not going to be as reckless. May still be a little reckless. We'll try not. But you got to work at it. Not that you work to get it, but you work at it. Amen. Diane, you want to come to the piano, please? It's just day's about over, and that's all right. But enjoy the day that the Lord has made. Rejoice in the day that the Lord has made. Amen. I'm going to ask you to stand. No one looking around. I'm going to ask you to bow your head. If you need to come pray, come on. If you need to pray, come on. You know I'm not long on the invitation, so if you need to come, you better come on. God's speaking to your heart. Would you step out and come? Bless Lord. Yeah, no turning back. My cross I carry till I see Jesus. Amen. Amen. Bless our little bless our little brother. Amen. Praise the Lord. Imagine you're in the mouth of the cave. It's not in the thunder. It's not in the fire. It's still, small voice. Regardless what's going on, He loves you. God loves you. Jesus loves you. Don't rate God's love with this life because this life will end. We're going to step into eternity one day. Never ending. Place of no more sorrow, no more death, no more tears. Streets of gold is transparent glass, walls of jasper, gates of pearl. No need of a S-U-N because of the S-O-N. Jesus will light. He will be, He is that light. Amen. 
Amen. Amen. We appreciate each and every one that's come out tonight.